Welcome. This is the August 9th Jail and Zones call for 2023. We have Jan, Goran, and myself, Michael. Others might trickle in. And one small announcement is that the Beehive Con call for participation is open. Any container or hypervisor topic is welcome. Feel free to reach out for me. I have never turned down a speaker. Also, there have been some rumblings with Zoom and their privacy relating to AI. I am open to ideas on Zoom alternatives. I do have someone operating Jitsi self-hosted, but the screen sharing and control is a bit limited. So that's an open discussion. And Antonega and I are looking at Google Docs alternatives, ideally self-hosted. So we've been discussing openly, but uh, Jan would like to give a quick demo of his package based jail thin provisioning. Uh, go ahead and do that. I will stop sharing and just explain to us what you're doing. Oh, it works better if I unmute myself. Indeed. So can you see my um, window? Yes, sir. Does it have a reasonable uh, resolution for you guys? Uh, aim for HD resolution if you can. So uh, widescreen, but that's your call. It'll just give you cute little bars on the sides. So yeah, yeah it looks reasonably good. Okay. Um. So what I have... This is uh, basically the make command I used to sign my repository. And this gets me this kind of look. Oh, um, where I have the base release and then the patch levels, each as a repository with a sim link, which is just like the official ones. I don't use, because this is a small test setup, uh, Prudia to build the base system packages. Instead, I just run it from uh, the base system make packages. And then afterward, use the command here to sign it for every patch, which gets released to 13.2 right now. Then I have The simple uh, definition of a repository. I used to make it available via SSH, but um, then you have to authenticate the clients and so on. And now I just make it available as a signed repository via HTTP, which is easier to automate and doesn't require running all the package commands with the right host definitions for SSH available because I found out that it doesn't work when starting the jail via the service script, because then it doesn't run as part of roots or my user's session. And then suddenly it doesn't know how to authenticate the SSH server. Okay. Now that I have a package defined, a package repository defined, I can take a look at this jail.conf, which defines a bunch of variables, including the repository to install the base system from and which of the base system packages to install. I don't install everything. I whipped out the headers and especially the compiler and uh, linker because that's just uh, about the size of the rest of the base system, just these two packages. And if I want to have them, I can still install them afterward. Now, because this is only for testing the packaging and not the networking side of things, right now I just inherit the host network stack unmodified with all of the downsides of doing that, but it's the easiest for testing. Other than that, the jail configuration is quite locked down with everything I don't use disabled right now. But what's important is that I do keep uh, the base system and even the packages uh, jail around as an empty persistent jail with no processes inside so that the jail command can use this for dependency tracking. So here is the prepare uh, hook. Let's scroll down so maybe it fits on a 
single screen. And what it does is it makes sure that under a temporary prefix, which is just the jail directory with a dot before the jail name, so slash jails dot base on this system, then um, I can't use the change root because there is nothing to change root into. So there is no user land at this point, but the packaging tools support this by using the root directory where the package tools run inside the, uh, what is supposed to become a change root or a jail, but they don't use the kernel features to lock themselves in there. So I don't want to rerun these commands afterward on a potentially untrusted file system because the packaging tools are supposed to execute hooks from packages. Um, so this would be an easy uh, uh, privilege escalation. Because of that, I install all of this into this temporary directory and then atomically rename the directory at the end and only do these... Uh, privilege setup steps on the temporary directory, which is never used as a root directory for the jail. And after the jail has been created, these commands aren't re-executed. For now, I just copy over the DNS resolver configuration from the host into the jail. Again, this can be done better, but it's good enough for a test setup. And I let the um, RC scripts run through so that anything which gets created on first start is executed once. So if we look at this here, you can see that uh, there are no mount points involved because this is a tiny uh, UFS system. Uh, it's just the device file system and the file descriptor file system around at runtime. Okay, let's test this. Oh, we don't have to read this. So I'm just wiping everything. So let's install the base system. Now it's fetching all the base system packages. And while this is happening, I we can look at the jail.conf here and What I'm doing is I install all the selected packages, auto remove the ones I don't want, clean the uh, cached packages so that in, under var cache package, there's not tens or hundreds of megabytes of cached packages. And afterward, I even delete the catalog because I don't want to update this base again. I want to create a new base to be to take the place of this the next time if I want to update it ever. The idea is not to modify this base system again, but to recreate it from the instructions. So if the next FreeBSD patch comes around, I delete it and reapply it and it will install the right base version. It may be better to make it part of a name, but yeah. And you can easily do that. Whereas the normal FreeBSD update tools can only update to the latest patch level, which is normally what you want to do. But if you want to reproduce an exact configuration, you can't. You can't install the second to last uh, FreeBSD patch level using FreeBSD update as far as I know. At least if it's possible, I've never found a way of doing it. Then I disable everything so that we're uh, normally running in a fresh installation, so no send mail, no cron, no syslog, so that there are no processes left after the RC scripts have finished. So here we can see the end result. 
because I uh, ran the jail command with verbose, we see what it's doing. Yeah. John, sorry, yes. can you can you uh, show the jail conf again? Sure. Are you willing to paste that in the uh, yes. document and maybe we add a few comments of why? Sure. Because this is uh, you you're doing God's work here. So um. <laughs> Uh, the question is, do you try, I don't know how it works for default, but I I know if you put it in RCConf, it works. So I'm just wondering if you say e, uh, send mail enable equals none. Does it uh, yes, um, the none should work, but then the jail, the some of the tooling complains uh, a bit. And this older, more verbose way of disabling it all. And oh, the, I even have it duplicated for some reason because I messed up. That's not, this wasn't by, uh, so uh, yeah. What I'm doing here is that I just, um, this here, make sure that the file starts out empty, which it should, but okay. Uh, during testing it, what is easier to do it this way so that I could re-execute this and get a fixed vendors conf instead of having it grow with each startup. Mm, but again, now I have this and if we enter the jail, so um, it's just my lock-in shell. And did you remove the package utilities themselves or? Well, um, like if you do a package in I have never installed there? them. Mm -hmm. uh, and But what I did remove is the uh, package database mm -hmm. for the base system because uh, just the full, uh, if I install package inside the jail, it fetches the official uh, remote repository database and this database is like 50 megabytes yep. so yep. a quarter of the size of the whole base system yeah of course it defines the metadata for tens of thousands of uh, packages just one package install away but i don't want to carry this around and if i don't update this system like normal fully featured freebsd user land but instead as only the starting point to base other jails on, then I uh, don't have to uh, keep this around and can slim down the base system from 300 something gigabytes to 170, which again, on a big system, it wouldn't really matter. On a, but what does matter is that by removing this, I don't have to preserve the state in slash var and can start from scratch with a new bootstrap if I want to. But I don't, I decouple the base and the packages I'm about to install. Let's mm -hmm. do that. So now, uh, this jail only installs the packages. It does not run them. It's the, it is also stateless. It can be, if there's a new version of a package, but not the base system, you destroy this jail and all its directories, recreate it, and then start again the jail which is supposed to execute it. So the, think of it uh, in the Linux terminology, this would basically be a layered Docker configuration where you have the base and then the modifications on top of that. And... Here we get this. Again, it's a persistent jail, so it stays around for dependency tracking. It depends on the base system. It has to know where to find the base system and the file system. I run it with very verbose um, debugging flex enabled in the shell. And then this makes just sure that certain directories exist as mount points. But the um, 
things about to be modified by installing packages, for example, and adding the um, CA uh, you have to have to do anything HTTPS related on the, uh, from these get installed into slash etc. So it has to be mutable. So what I do is I create it and similar to what mount MFS would do, I then use the PEX command from the base system to just take this directory I just entered and copy it over, which is a bit cleaner than just doing a CP because it preserves more metadata. Huh. This is what mount MFS does, which is why I use PEX instead of tar, but both would work. Basically, I could just have tar pipe tar, but the PEX command can basically stream within itself so that it creates an archive of the working directory in this case and immediately uh, unpacks it into this part. Mm. Nice. So it ne the archive is never written, not even over a pipe. Now that I have this, I do the same with the var directory, which is very small because I ripped out the useless parts I don't want to preserve, like the package database for things I no longer yep. want to manage this way. And then I just uh, use these commands to make sure that certain file systems are mounted. Uh, this way of doing it, while less declarative than what's available, is more resilient because the mounting logic in the jail command does not do full automatic mounting. It just makes sure that it executes this line as a mount command instead of an FS tab to be fed to the auto mounting logic in mount. So if the file system is already mounted, it will just fail instead of just seeing, oh, I'm an in the important command, everything is fine. Um, so this works. It would be nice to see the jail command just use the existing features in mount instead of doing this, but I think it gained support for doing it one line at a time. So it made sense to just call the mount command and then the FS tab is in reality just call mount once per line instead of uh, really using an FS tab to be fed to mount. Uh, yeah, okay, then we get the start, which again, make sure that uh, the, I'm fetching from the latest packages instead of the um, quarterly packages. Quarterly. That's, yeah. yeah, that's just pref my personal preference for this. And, but again, both work. Um, Right now it's relevant because uh, the older versions have the older packaging tools and so on, but and the older packages haven't been recompiled when I tried this. I assume that this has now been moved back to quarterly, the package 1.20 support and so on. But uh, now I install the packages and clean up afterward. So I rip out everything again. We, this jail is only supposed to contain the installed packages as its state. If we look into what it, this means, uh, so this is here. Um, these are the certificates pulled in and then this is all um, so here are the files installed what does Mosquito do? This is the MQTT broker I hmm. use as a simple example. Um, okay, I have this here flying around. It's a simple daemon I can use as a test case. I could mm -hmm. use a static web, web server with Nginx. I could run an rsync whatever, so, something. But I just wanted a simple daemon to test. Okay. 
and then not the most creative name, but this is the jail actually running the demon later on. So, oh. So one jail supporting the other with either package so, installation uh, or this otherwise? Is the, basically, the layering is, this is the FreeBSD user land. Yeah. This is the installed packages, and then this is the configuration and uh, the state for, let's say, your database. This is the, in this case, the state of your MQTT broker, the persistent reservations, uh, higher QRS messages and so on would be written to somewhere in the slash var file system of this jail. And because I'm using NullFS to mount them in the right order so that they overlay each other. So let's check this. Jails mounted on jails and each one running separately, independently, as I see in your JLS. Mm hmm next to each other as uh, siblings, but with dependencies in Interesting. between. Uh, how's the blog you... post coming? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So here, and the state is just then again here under slash, um, uh, under slash jails. But what I want, mount dash V. Um, let me make that a bit uh, easier to read. Hmm, not really. Uh, I will just make my terminal a bit wider. So um, as you can see, the base system here is mounted as a read-only null FS. The slash etc file system is also read only from the packages, but I don't have to modify anything in there for this jail. I could copy it, but then I would have to maintain it. Instead, I just uh, may take advantage of what's available in the default configuration. I used to, uh, so that um, things get included if they are in under USR local ETC in the right location and you don't have to modify the base for things like new syslog uh, or enabling demons under usl local etc rc.conf.d uh, some daemon name. So I just uh, have to copy this uh, and make it available via nullfs as uh, read write. Again, to minimize the state per J. Yep. Looks like it's hey, working. Was Sorry? Nothing. That was not supposed to be okay. on speakerphone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Um, of course, all of this is quite invasive and takes completely the agency away from the jail user land. It's only basically a managed jail, it's not a generic virtual uh, FreeBSD user land at this point, if you treat it this way, which is what makes it so much less work to manage thousands of them right, or, or hundreds of them, eh? because you only have to do it once and then apply it instead of allowing them to diverge potentially and then having them break or diverge over time. This way, it just doesn't even allow this to ever start diverging because it's the read-only file system. Hmm. Uh, but we could do lots of things, either have things get copied over on first uh, run, like I do for the slash etc between the base and the package collection. Yeah. Or... Uh, copy files back and forth on a, if you care about 
the last bit of performance you could use mount mfs to pre-populate uh temp fs on every start so there are lots of options but again the mechanisms are there what's missing is tooling with at le least a little bit of opinion on how to hold it so that it's usable by mo mere mortals instead of just a collection of interesting features to research so will that materialize as a blog post as a wiki entry or something in the notes or all of the above and how can we maybe. help maybe uh, what it is isn't it is the is a side effect of me looking into using nomad on freebsd and yeah, how would I go about preparing something to run as a task under Nomad? Got it. That said, that's very good work. I love where you're headed with that. And I see how things like my little, well, build options could could perform um, a similar role if that was suitable so, to the task, but uh, the housekeeping you're doing is fantastic. I love it. So, again, here on shutter, and I just unmount for file systems. Yep, love it. So, are you willing to either share that as is or comment it up for a blog post or something just so that this wisdom isn't lost and only trapped in a video? Yeah, I can share to the gel.conf, but it won't help much without context. So yeah, the, the package the setup would be appreciated. Yeah, the, the package repository that. right now, I'm not prepared to commit to keeping it around, but it's publicly available if you well, just want the steps. to just Like, hey, yeah. here's how you can bootstrap it. Oh, sure. Not quite the right term, but yeah, please do share that. That is fantastic. Yeah, that's what I played with. Fantastic. <laughs> Uh, Goran, any questions for him? I basically understand what you're doing. It's a bit overwhelming, to, to be honest. <laughs> That's a good word for this, but uh, yeah. but I've long pictured I've pictured this for like twenty years. So uh, keep it coming. I love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. And even if package-based hosts do not become fashionable, this is a good use case for package base. In fact, it's the original I envisioned when I first discovered jail back in like 03. So I will say great work.